Hello everyone. We only have three more order halls to cover. And from the remaining ones that I still need to do, you guys and girls voted for the priest one the most. Now there was a bit of confusion about that when I did the warrior one. People were like, what? Warlock got the most votes, obviously. But I've already covered the warlock campaign, as well as the mage and the warrior one. So priest is up next. This one shares the storyline with the paladin order hall campaign, which got some negative feedback since not only did the priest get a copied artifact quest, they also share the order hall campaign with the paladins. Despite getting some copied stuff, there are definitely some interesting bits of lore here and there, so let's dive into the story, which takes us back to the time where the Council of Six gathered, they teleported Dalaran to the Broken Isles to take the battle to the Legion. Upon arriving at our destination, a horde of priest shows up at the behest of one who seeks to organize a stronger resistance to this Legion threat. We're asked to meet him at Fals Rest in Tiraspal Glades, where he will guarantee both our safety and an opportunity to play a pivotal role in this conflict. At Files Rest, we find Kalia, later revealed to be none other than Kalia Menefil, sister to Arthas Menefil. We ask her if she's the one that we're supposed to meet here, but another character lost to the ages, he moves out of the shadows. Forgive the secrecy, old habits die hard. I am Alonsus Fowl. At times, I have been a leader of a church, a mindless minion of the Scourge, and a commander in a secret war. But I have always been a priest first. The Legion poses a threat that cannot be ignored. So I have decided to step out from the shadows. I believe we must unite priesthoods of all denominations against our common enemy. To lead this effort, we require a priest who is a proven champion to all people. I believe that you are that hero, but others must be convinced. Will you accept this challenge? Alonsus Fall is the one responsible for the creation of paladins. Back during the first Horde invasion of Azeroth, Stormwind had already fallen and its citizens were forced to evacuate to the lands of Lordaeron. The Alliance of Lordaeron was formed and Anduin Lothar knew that they needed something to bind the different nations as one. They needed champions whom every human could rally behind, no matter where they came from. The clerics, they were the most obvious choice, but they hadn't done well in the first war. Though they were brave, they lacked the martial training needed and they were better suited to use the holy light to mend the wounds of the battlefields. Lothar needed something else, and it was Alonsus who came up with the solution of combining the skills in Wielder the Light, but also in leadership and the arts of traditional warfare. Alonsus called his students the Paladins, and their group was named the Order of the Silver Hand, with their first members being Turelian, Seden Dafrohan, Tyrion Fordring, Ufer, later to be given the title of Lightbringer, and Gavinra the Dyer. The city of Strefholm, that would later serve as the Paladin's base of operation, but for the time being, Lothar kept them close, ordering them to travel along the main Alliance army. These troops would make an immense difference in the war against the Horde, especially since the Horde by this time, they now had the Death Knights created by Gul'dan. As most of you know, the Horde was eventually defeated, and Alonsus, he kept going on as Archbishop of the Church of Light. He led the ceremony when Arthas joined the Paladins of the Silver Hand. He was there when Tyrion Fordring was placed on trial for treason, but then he was just dead and no real reason was given. Most simply assumed that he died of old age, but it's also possible that the Twilight Hammer cult, that they might have something to do with it, since his replacement, Archbishop Benedictus, he would go on to join their cult as the Twilight Father and work on bringing about the Hour of Twilight. According to Benedictus, he didn't despair until he gazed upon Deathwing himself, but it is possible that the old gods and the Twilight Hammer, that they played the long game here, and knew well ahead that Benedictus was a lot more vulnerable to corruption. Who knows, the details as to how Fall died, what he did when he came back as an undead, that has not been explained as far as I know. What I do know is that Fall sends us out to pick up a powerful artifact to use in the war against the Legion, and upon doing so, we return to Dalaran, where not only Alonsus is waiting, we also have Moira, leader of the Dark Iron Dwarfs, and Prophet Velen, leader of the Draenei. We have demonstrated no small amount of skill in completing our task, which is good, for they will require more of us if we are to survive this conflict. Watch your tongue. With that we are in agreement. Now, speak with Velen. He has an... interesting matter to discuss with you. The mages have established a portal for us to use. If you would follow me, I would speak of the Naru and the Dranai. Over the long years of the Dranai's flight from the Burning Legion, the Naru helped us, sometimes at the cost of their very lives. 
We would have perished without their aid. At last we found a way to repay their kindness. We came upon a terrible sight. A Naru that had turned to the void. There had to be a way to save it. We built a prison to contain and study the fallen creature. A place to commune with the Naru and ponder the nature of the twisting nether. It is here that I would take you. Behold, Soraka, destroyer of worlds. Brought to heal after millennia of wanton destruction. The Draenei sought to devise a ritual that could turn the Naru back to the light. To aid their quest, I called together many priesthoods to work in unison. We are close to success. I believe the weapon you obtained will tip the scales in our favor. If you would step into the main circle, we can begin the ritual. This Naru has fallen from its light state to its darker void form, and as a Shadow Priest, you drain the Void God of his remaining Void Essence, but with the other specs, you either purge it with the Holy Fire, or you fill it with the Healing Lights. Yes, use the blade to draw out the Void Energy. Yes, it's working. Can you feel it? The hunger, the rage, they are gone. The light has welcomed me home. Once again, you have proven your worth, my friend. With the aid of Sahara and the power of your weapon behind you, there is no one more capable. Priesthoods from all over Azeroth have agreed to donate time and resources to this new conclave. We have a singular purpose. The defeat of the Burning Legion. I hereby bring the conclave to order. Together, we will bring hope and healing to our allies and banish our foes into the void. Now, champion, we shall transform this prison into a temple that will serve as the headquarters of our campaign. This shouldn't take long. Over here! I think you will approve of the changes we've made. As we are now the Cardinal, they've worked on a way to empower our newly obtained artifacts, work done by Batil together with Sa'ara. We use the altar created, we pick our first point of assault to kick some demon butts, we gather some allies and we gain some experience. As we travel back to Daladan, we find a hooded priest again with a message from Alonso's foul. He says introductions are in order and requests our presence within Netherlight Temple. Let I'd us like get to introduce to you to Kalia Menethil. Yes, that Menethil. She has been a great help these past few years. I'd like her to assist you helping the helpless, conveying your word to the world. All that. Like I said, Kalia is Arthas' older sister, and she hasn't done a great deal in the story. She grew up in Lordaeron, of course, she became friends with Jaina Proudmoore, and she nearly got married to Deathwing, disguised as Devil Prestor, but luckily for her, Deathwing's plans were prevented. She was then present during Arthas' ceremony as he became a paladin, and as most of you know, the lands of Lordaeron, they would see some dire times with the introduction of the plague. This eventually led to Arthas traveling to Northrend and picking up the cursed blade Frostmourne. He was turned to the dark side and returned to his kingdom not as a paladin, but as a death knight, following the whispers of Ner'zhul the Lich King. Kalia's father was one of the first to taste Frostmourne's icy cold touch. Her mother, according to the ultimate visual guide, is also deceased, but her fate was never fully explained. Some speculated that she could be Kalia Hashtings of the SI7, but now we know that she somehow survived the Scourge rampaging through her kingdom, and... I once hid in a muddy ditch for two days while slavering ghouls patrolled the area. Your prattle does not phase me. The details of those years, they're not explained, but here she is, ready to serve as her first champion, together with High Priestess Ishana, leader of the Aldor, which you might remember from the Burning Crusade. You won't be alone on this journey. May the light guide your way. 
They are willing to do whatever is necessary to destroy the Burning Legion. And the first mission for our champions is to spread the words to let people know that Netherlight Temple is a sanctuary. They go out and bring back with them Grand Anchorite Kesslar, who has an eye for greatness and can easily spot a recruit with potential. He will allow us to recruit groups of Acolytes, we can help our champions on their next mission, which is a routine scouting mission, but one in which they are able to rescue Archon Torias, a skilled researcher whose knowledge extends far beyond light and shadow. In thanks, he's agreed to lend his expertise to our cause and allows us to upgrade our temple. Now many within our order, they have been on the front lines of battle for far too long. It is time that we send in some relief, allowing our allies some much needed rests. They're resting and recuperating, but one not as well as the others. Gilner Greymoss is lingering within the sanctuary of the void, laughing to himself. He refuses to leave, but his presence is making the other priest uneasy, so we go to speak with him to see what exactly is wrong. They're taunting us, you know? <laughs> the shadows, they see our demise! Hmm, interesting. <laughs> you don't hear them, do you? They're laughing, they're warning. Oh, our time is coming! The void sends whispers of our fate, a gruesome death! Oh, light a candle for your loved ones, priest, because the end is near and inescapable! <laughs> Another shadow priest spouting nonsense. I can't say I'm surprised. Things like this are bound to happen when you linger too close to the void. We cannot afford to make careless assumptions. Let us get to us. work. We need to find out if this shadow priest speaks the truth. Velen wants to induce a vision to see if there's any truth to the mad ramblings, but forcing it is not how it's typically done. We do have the best and brightest alchemists within our ranks who can craft an extract that will grant him the sight that he needs. We fly out to Azuna to meet up with these amazing alchemists. There is Zabra Hex, who was part of the Ashbringer comics. He found his own way to the light and he helped out Darian Mograin on his quest. There's also the Pandaren Yalia Sage Whisper, a member of the Shadow Pan and potential love interest for Chen Stormstout. Zabra has had an unfortunate encounter with the local basilisk, but nothing that a master spell can't fix. It feels like these spawns of mine haven't moved in years. Come, let's find some place to talk where we won't be caught by a basilisk gaze. Zabra and Yalia, they were here to deliver some antidotes to the front lines of Ferranar when they were attacked by a whole herd of murlocs. They dropped their supplies and they tried to make a run for it. Yalia never made it out of the camp and Zabra didn't do much better. It's up to us to collect the supplies they dropped while also saving Yalia from the murlocs captivity. Priest, over here! I need your help! I've tried breaking out, but the wooden bars are too thick. This cage may be strong, but remember, a murloc's mind is weak and easily controlled. You have my thanks. Yalia runs off and lets us deal with the murlocs and collect its supplies, but they are willing to help us with forcing the vision for Velen. It's no easy task though, finding the ingredients for the elixir, that alone will take quite a bit of time, so while they work on that problem, we finish the original mission by taking the supplies to Ferranar and curing the demon hunters. Things have been going a lot better for them since we ran into them, and they're so impressed with our willingness to help that both the Pandaren and the Troll, they decide to join us as champions. We stand together. I choose to believe that fate has brought us together. Now we have the elixir that Vela needs to force this vision, but in order for others to see what he sees, we'll need something that can be used to project images from the minds. The Lens of Tides, held by Lady Hate Coil within the Eye of Azora, that would do just the trick, so we go in and collect it from our dead body. With all of that done, we're ready to get this show on the road and see what the future holds for the eyes of Prophet Velen. I see a great darkness looming over Netherlight Temple. The shadow of the Burning Legion, ready to strike. Our order will fall at his hands. Everyone within will perish. This will be our fate. We are doomed to die at the hands of the Dread Lord Balnazar. This will be our fate. Unless... I see a path that leads to our victory. You are there, walking with the light, 
guiding us all. It's becoming clear. An old enemy becomes an ally. Forgotten shadows rise. All unite under the light. The threat of Dreadlord Belnazar is looming over Netherlight Temple. Why the Void would be whispering about this is beyond me, but luckily their crazy talk, it pushed us to see the future and now we still have time to prepare. We will not let this demon determine our fate. We have the power to change our future. Well, Velen, he decides to retire for a bit since the weight of this vision, it has taken quite a toll on his mind and his body. You rest, Velen, while we take care of business. Word of our leadership has spread fast and priests of all sorts have traveled to the temple to lend their aid. Vika Eliza is amongst them. She's quite the leader in her own right, commanding countless devotees to do her bidding without question. She will allow us to recruit zealots to support our champions on their missions. While the priestess Dallas Moonfang, she cannot stand idly by and allow the Lees to destroy our home. She's been studying their language for quite some time now, deciphering any runes that she can get her hands on, but the supply is severely limited. If she only had more runes to study, she may discover something that will help us locate Belnazar. So we go about collecting demonic runes though from the demons throughout the Broken Isles. Elune, light your path. I'll head to Dalaran and find a quiet place to decipher these rune stones. This is where the Paladin and Priest Order Hall campaigns start to cross over with each other. Since the Paladins, at this point in time, they've also been informed about Belnazar, Fruit Light's hearts, and they've collected the Codex of Command, which they bring to Dallas to decipher, who eventually decides to move away from the path of priesthood, and she actually becomes a Paladin. While they work on that, we focus on the Prophecy, who says that the Light must walk among us. Within the Halls of Valor, we can find Herja, an ascending Valkyr who has a spark of light in her possession, so we knock her unconscious, we take away the light, and we bring Bring it back to our temple. This spark will only know its full potential once it's been filled with pure light taken from the holiest places in our world. A perfect task for our champions who go out to these different locations like the Exodar, the Sunwell, Light Hope Chapel and Ufer's Tomb to collect remnants of pure light which we use to nurture the spark. How can I be of service? With the grace of the light, we have given birth to Sol, a light spawn, which you can also find as a card within Hearthstone. I am light incarnate! With the light at our side, we should focus our efforts on figuring out the next bit of the prophecy, an old enemy that becomes an ally. Finding an ally among our enemies might prove to be a difficult task. Difficult, but not impossible, as our followers are sent out to infiltrate our enemies and find out if any amongst them could make a potential ally. They come back with a report that amongst the Scarlet Onslaught, a faction that was formed out of the Scarlet Crusade, and the Scarlet Crusade had become incredibly fanatic in the war against the undead, eventually being unable to see the difference between friend or foe. Being infiltrated by Dread or Belnazar, that will do that to your organization, and the Scarlet Onslaught, they eventually found themselves fighting the Lich King and his newly created Death Knights. Their survivors set sail to the cold lands of Northrend, where they made the base of New Harf Glen, only to once again be infiltrated by Dreadlords. This time it was Melganus. Heroes of the Alliance and Horde, they did some severe damage to their organization, but they didn't wipe them out entirely, and now it's been discovered that there are a few defectors amongst their ranks. This might be the potential old enemy turned ally, so we make our way to New Harf Glen to check out the situation and see if these defectors, if they can be brought to the light. Just do it already! I would rather die than spend another day living a life built around your twisted beliefs. We saved Mariella from a gruesome fate as discarded onslaughts, they were ready to hang her, simply because their beliefs no longer line up with what the onslaught deems is right and holy. There are others like her, others that have removed the veil that the Scarlet Crusade has kept over the eyes for so very long. We go about saving them as well, while also teaming up with Mariella, slaying those that she used to be loyal to. She was prepared to die, to pay for the terrible things she had done while being part of this organization. Now she feels like the light shines upon her. For the first time in her life, she can feel it. We are her chance at the redemption, and after killing a whole bunch of the Scarlets, including Inquisitor Wards, she is ready to come back with us and become our ally. I will atone. I'm ready to leave this place and never look back. This is unexpected. A scarlet priest walking through our temple. I no longer take their name or their values. I wish to aid my fellow priests in their fight against the Burning Legion. In times such as these, we cannot afford to turn away those willing to help. We welcome you as our new ally. 
Commander, Alonsus. Forgive the interruption, but I have news I believe you will want to hear. Go on, Dallas. Tell us what you've learned. I've been working with a pony Brightmane and the leader of her order. We translated a codex that details the Legion's plans to establish an invasion point at Felblaze Ingress. I'd like to take a small group of priests to accompany the Paladins in their search of this demon world. If the Dreadlord is there, we will find him. Very well, Dallas. Return to the temple at once when you have any information we can act on. I will not let you down. You gave me a chance to redeem myself, and I will spend my life trying to do so. Two steps of the prophecy are down. There's one more to go. Forgotten shadows must rise. To do so, we'll have to restore the cult of forgotten shadows, whose remaining followers are at Ravenhill Cemetery within Duskwood. Legion actually added a whole lot more to the background of Shadow Priests. In the past, all we really had to work with was Natalie Selene, a human bishop from Lordaeron. She started to study the orc necrolites that had invaded Azeroth. She first did this as a way to learn how to fight against them, but later she became obsessed as to why these powers existed at all. She started to preach about the necessity of balance between darkness and light. Now she did eventually die, her books were locked away, but the forsaken priests they found them again and they used their studies to form the cult of forgotten shadows. Word of the Conclave, the book that describes some of the history behind the artifacts, that adds that Zalatov, Blade of the Black Empire, that actually found its way into Natalie's hands as she was studying the orcs. She actually planned to destroy the blade in the name of the light, but the moment she touched it, a name was spoken in her mind. Zalatov. I knew then that I could not destroy the dagger. Not yet. How can one defeat a power she does not understand? And I had much to understand, very much indeed. Zalatov whispered to me in waking and in dreaming. It taught me that there is more to this world than light. There is also void. In the ebb and flow between these two forces, one can find power and knowledge beyond anything the Church of Holy Light has ever revealed to us. One can cross the divide between light and void. One can pull strands from each side and weave a tapestry of day and night. Of course, there are consequences. There always are when walking in the shadows. By the time of the Second War, Natalie Selene had learned how to wield shadow magic from Zalatov. She had taught her dangerous arts to other worshippers of the light, and she rallied them against the hordes. Selene and her followers, they waged the war in secret, hunting down orcs across the human kingdoms. Zalatov continued whispering in her mind, slowly unraveling her sanity. Despite her noble intentions, she became more and more obsessed with the blade and the mysteries of the void. And so did Selene's companions. They were overzealous in their campaign against the orcs, putting innocent lives at risk. Some even strayed too far into the shadow, forsaking the light completely. Though Selene urged her followers to use caution, her calls were ignored and even treated with suspicion. It is unclear exactly what happened to the former bishop, but some sources state that Zalatov incited a rebellion amongst their allies. It convinced them that Selene was holding them back from their true potential, holding back knowledge and power that they could have if they killed her. In the dead of night, the conspirators murdered Selene and then took Zalatov for themselves. For years, the Kinator Magi in Dalaran, they had watched Natalie Selene, greatly troubled by her dark teachings. Now after her death, they set out to scout her writings from history. Magi picked through the villages and cities that Selene had traveled, gathering up every scroll and tome that she had penned. The Kinator hid these writings in Dalaran, hoping that that would be the end of Selene's dangerous band of magic. Yet despite their efforts, they could not bury the doctrine of balance that she had preached. In the years to come, others would take up the teachings and devote themselves to the light and the void. Now even though the artifact book suggests that Selene is dead, that's not exactly what happened. Natalie knew her fate and she took steps to protect herself from an inevitable death. The night that her attackers came, Natalie sent her spirit to the void, its location known only to Natalie herself. She was smart enough to write down a spell to retrieve her spirit in one of her many journals, a tome which has fallen into the hands of those who wished her dead in the first place. We take on this group of Twilight cultists, we recover the journal from the dead body of Twilight Lord Orgrok, we cast the spell at the Catacomb Shadow Altar and we enter the void to recover her spirit. By following the void trail and fighting off some of the void essences, we find the spirit of Natalie herself who seems to have lost herself. The shadows will devour you! Is one with the void.
Thank you, priest. The weight of the darkness has been lifted. We pulled her spear from the void, which is no easy feat. Part of her wanted to stay there forever, embraced by the shadows. The void is filled with many whispers, the kind that have us all worried. We cannot afford to be separated by our beliefs. We must come together as priests of both light and shadow to face the burning legion together. Can you I have the shadows at your side, should you ever need them. News of Nelly's return will spread fast amongst those who share our beliefs, and soon enough, Azeroth will see the rise of shadows. That's the final part of the prophecy fulfilled, but upon returning to Nedlite Temple, we find Lord Maxwell Terrosus, who has some very dire news. Stop where you are! Only priests may step forth within this temple. Please, let me pass. I have news of Dallas Moonfang. Dallas we will say. prevail. Very well. You may remain as a guest until your business with the commander is complete. Dallas, during the paladin part of the campaign, she joined her troops as they prepared an attack on the Legion at Felblade's ingress. As she promised, Dallas brought Conclave priests to join the battle. Our forces are getting along well. The priests also seek Balnazar. Their leader, Prophet Velen, saw a vision of the Dreadlord raining destruction upon Azeroth. The Legion does not yet suspect our presence. Their leader, Brood Queen Aramis, roams the camp each day. We attack tomorrow. May the light guide us. We underestimated the Legion's cunning. After we attacked, the portal blazed to life. Balnazar arrived and tore through our defenses. We are still alive, but they are taking us through the portal. To their homeworld. What lies on the other side? I broke free for a moment. Please, if anyone finds this, you are our only hope of rescue. We need to save our forces, so we step through the portal as well, and we end up on Nishkara. Priest! Over here! This is the same quest as Paladins go through. First, we save our troops, amongst them Delus and Erator. Delus! Thank goodness you're alive! You came back. I thought my end had finally come. Never, my friend. The light stands together. I will go ahead and help the others. We will get out of here together, sister. Erator, are you still alive? Yes, I'm alright. That imp mother was getting a little too close for comfort. You should head back to the portal. The High Lord and I will take care of the rest. That's how bad the copy-paste is. The voiceover actually calls you High Lord instead of High Priest. Whatever. With our troops safe, the next part is to gather as much information as we can. These are detailed travel logs. It appears the Legion has been scouring the Twisting Nether. But for what? I recognize this place. Is it... Netherlight Temple? Is the Legion planning to invade the Priest Order Hall? That's the Prophet Velen. His life may be in great danger. Are you here for him? You won't get past me! What you don't get to experience as a priest is the part where you save the mysterious stranger, the one that Aramis asks you about. Lofraxion does end up as a paladin follower, but it would make a lot more sense to actually explain what's going on with him, since the final bit of the campaign that is shared by both classes. Basically, this stranger is a holy dreadlord. We still don't know how a holy dreadlord came to be, but he was sent over by Turelian and the Army of Lights. They've been hunting the Burning Legion across the stars for ages, and in retribution, they send Belnazar to Azeroth to destroy all that they hold dear. From the intelligence gathered, we learn that Belnazar has set his eyes on Velen and Netherlight Temple, and while Lofraxion will bring allies to defend the temple, they are very far away, so he needs our help to fight the enemy until they can arrive. We should the return, my priest. Our we allies need to hear this. Oh. That part of the story, unless I really miss something, is not explained during the priest campaign. Instead, we return to Alonzus with our gathered information, further proof that the prophecy cannot be ignored. The Legion's attack is imminent, and we will not survive without the Paladins as our allies under the light. Since we have already dealt with the Paladins before, it will be up to us and Dallas to ask them for aid. We have a tough decision before us. Do we aid the priests in their battle against Balnazar? Or do we decline? and wait to fight the Dreadlord on our own terms. The temple is located deep in Legion territory. We would be putting ourselves at great risk. It will be dangerous, but we may never get such a chance again. 
It may be the only way. Balnazar will not suspect a united force. The Conclave and the Order of the Silver Hand, fighting together. It is decided then. They will help defend Netherlight Temple and lay a trap for Belnazar, so it's time for the final preparations. The Legion will strike at any moment and we must be ready to deal with a multitude of injured and afflictions, so a total of 100 supplies are needed. We must strengthen the temple's defenses and with the right resources we can make a nearly impenetrable fortress, so 30 world quests have to be completed. To prepare for battle, we will need the best armor and weapons we can get. Lumenstone is an enchanted material that can withstand great amounts of fell magic. It's found in rare quantities all over the Broken Isles, so we send our champions out to, for example, Feronar, Suramar, Vashir and Stormheim to collect this material. With their missions complete, there's enough Lumenstone to craft armor and weapons for an army. And a good thing too, since the battle is upon us, the Legion is on the attack, it is time for the defense of Netherlight Temple. The Legion has begun their attack. We must send word to our allies at once. We let Maxwell Tarosis and Prophet Vela know that the time has come and both groups join us within the temple. Do not give up! The High Priest has arrived with reinforcements! Long we have searched for you, Prophet Vela. Here you thought yourself safe from the Legion's gaze. Now, finally, your soul is mine! Balnazar, your arrogance is mighty, but Azeroth's heroes will stand against you. It will be up to us to defeat Ogorov in the Sanctuary of Light and Toranai the Soul Eater in the Sanctuary of the Void. After doing so, we shut down four Legion portals, cutting off the Legion reinforcements. Impressive hero. Let us see how you do without your allies. We do quite well with our allies, despite most of them being trapped inside fell bubbles. But the battle is not easy, and reinforcements, they will be very much appreciated. Ugh. Enough! I tire of this game! Now, taste the true might! OF THE BURNING LEGION! Hold your ground! They won't take us down without a fight! There are too many! It is no use. The Prophet's vision has come to pass. Where is your light now, heroes? Allies, do not despair. It is I, Lothraxian, High Commander of the Grand Army of the Light. On order of High Exarch Turalion, we came as fast as we could. I am sending reinforcements down to join you. Heroes, rally beneath the light. Balnazar, prepare to meet your end. No! I will never be defeated! Together with Lofraxion and the reinforcements from the Army of the Light, the Priest and the Paladins united, we take on Belnazar and we vanquish the demon. We did it. The Dreadlord is dead. Thank you, Paladins of the Silver Hand. A great enemy is defeated this day. We have shown the Legion that Azeroth will not fall quietly. Prophet Velen, warriors of light, a well-earned victory. I expected nothing less from the heroes of Azeroth. Let us take a moment to rest and restore our temple to its intended glory. Through your guidance and strength, we have emerged the victors in a great battle that was meant to destroy us. It would be foolish to think this attack will be the last, but we should take a moment to reflect on this victory and celebrate its true hero, our High Priest. 
to the high priest. We have fulfilled the prophecy, but more than that, we have united the priest of Azeroth. Alansas knew it from the moment that we met in the quiet fields of Tirisfall, and he becomes our champion. We will fight and win many more battles under your leadership, high priest. With their work upon the altar of light and shadow complete, they discover the method to awaken the full power of a weapon. Now I'm not sure if it's wise to empower Zalatov like that, but who cares, new skins for the artifacts. Welcome, High Priest. In the course of your service to the Conclave, we have witnessed your bond with the ancient weapon you hold grow stronger. The battles you've won and the resources you've gathered have shown us a way to awaken the full potential of your artifact. Behold! The altar of light and shadow shall infuse your weapon with its might! As long as our faith stays strong, and you stand as our champion, the Burning Legion will never claim Azeroth. May the new powers of your weapons serve you well, Alonso says, as we, with the aid of the Paladins and the Army of Light, we've been able to keep Netherlight Temple safe, and we even took out Belnazar. Now when it comes to the priests, I feel that they've been a bit neglected in Legion, copying not only one of the artifacts, but also part of the Order Hall, and even leaving out some pretty crucial information. Feels bad, man. Now, of course, I don't know what the future is going to bring, but having Kalia come back like that with no real information, Alonza suddenly an undead without a fully explained background, I really hope that we'll get more details on that. I did really enjoy the additional Shadow Priest lore. I feel like that was a much needed addition. But let me know what you think of the Order Hall campaign. I'm quite curious. Either way, with that, we've reached the end of the video. So as always, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time, guys. See ya!